live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. Live here in Las Vegas, AWS reInvent 2018 live coverage from theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, my co-host, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, Dave, six years covering Amazon, watching it grow, watching it just an unstoppable force of new services. Web services being realized from the original vision years and many, many years ago, over a decade. Jesse Rothstein, CTO and co-founder of Extra Hops, our next guest. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, so you. first of all, before we get into the conversation, what's your take on this madness here? It's pretty crazy. You know, this is, I think this is my sixth year as well, and this show must double in size every year. It's enormous, uh, spread across so many venues, so much going on. Uh, I, it's almost overwhelming. I remember six years ago, we used to be on theCUBE, and I think we just kept the stream open. Hey, come on up, we have an opening. Now it's like two cubes, people trying to get on, no more room, we're dying, we go as hard as we can. 16 interviews, hundreds of interviews. Touch, lots of change, so I got to ask you, what is your view of the ecosystem? Because you know, back then, handful of players in there, you guys were one of them. A lot of opportunities around the rising tide here. What's your, what's your thoughts on the ecosystem evolution? Well, of course the ecosystem has grown. Uh, this show has really become recognized as the preeminent cloud show. But I, I see some, some themes that I think have, have certainly solidified. Uh, for example, I, I've spent a bunch of time on the security track uh, that's the largest track by far, I'm told. They're actually breaking it out into a, a separate add-on conference uh, coming up in the summer. Right. Uh, so clearly there's a great deal of interest around cloud security as organizations. So did they actually announced that, their... that security conference? They did. Okay, so they it's did. in they Boston announced... in June, I June, think it is, right? That's yeah. correct, they announced that. I, I think, I don't want to mess up the dates, June, late June. I think June 26th, yeah. breaking news here, that's new information. That's a really good signal for Amazon. They're taking Syria, security serious. When I interviewed Andy Jassy a couple, uh, last week, um, he said to me, security used to be a blocker. Oh, the cloud's not secure. You remember that was just a couple of short years ago. Now it's actually a competitive advantage, but still a lot more work to get done. Network layer all the way up. What's your take? Never done. Well, so, so that's, what, that's what Andy says, and I, I think that I, I, would, I would rephrase that slightly differently. Uh, security used to be a blocker, and it used to be an area of anxiety, and organizations would have huge debates around you know, whether the cloud is, is less secure or not inherently. I think today there's a lot more acceptance that the cloud can be just as secure as on-prem or just as insecure. You know, from my view, uh, it relies on the same people, processes, and technologies that are inherently insecure as we have on-prem, and, yeah. and, and therefore it's just as insecure. There are some advantages. Uh, the cloud has you know, great API logging, building blocks like, like CloudTrail, new services uh, like GuardDuty, but at, at the same time, it's hard to hire for cloud security expertise, and there is an, an inherent opacity in public cloud that I think is a real challenge for security. Well, and, ba and bad human behavior always trump, trumps well, good security. Of course. Too, right? Talk <laughs> about ExtraHop, how you guys are navigating. You guys have been in the ecosystem for a while. Um, always an opportunity to grow. I love this. TAM is expanding. Um, huge expansion in the adjustable market. New use cases. What's up with you guys? Give us an update. Where's the value proposition resonating? What's the focus? Well, you, you can probably tell from, from my interest that we see a, a, lot, of, a lot of market pull and, and opportunity around cloud security. Uh, XDrop is an analytics product for IT ops and security. So there's a, yeah. a certain segment of what we do for IT operations use cases. Um, delivering essentially a better, better level of service. We attach to use cases like cloud migrations and new application rollouts. Uh, but we also have a cybersecurity offering that's a, a very advanced offering around network behavioral analytics, where we actually can detect suspicious behaviors and potential threats, bring them to your attention, and then since we leverage our broader analytics platform, it, you're a click away from being able to investigate or, or disposition these, these detections and see, hey, is this something I, I really need to be Give an example about. of some of the network um, um, behavior, because I think this is a real critical one, because with no perimeter, you got no surface area, you got APIs, this is the preferred architecture, but you got to watch the traffic. How will you guys be specific and give an example? So, some of my favorite examples have to do with detecting when you've already been breached. Organizations have been investing in defense in depth for decades, you know, keep the attackers out at the perimeter, keep the attackers away from the endpoint. Uh, but how would you know if you've already been breached? 
And it turns out, you know, Verizon does a great data breach investigation report annually, and they determined that there are only nine or so behaviors that account for 90% of, 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 of what all breaches do, what they look like. So you look for things like um, parts of the, the, the cybersecurity attack chain. You look for reconnaissance. You look for lateral movement. You look for some form of exfiltration. Where XDROP has taken this further is that we've built sophisticated behavioral models. We're able to understand privilege. We're able to understand what are the most important systems in your environment, the most important instances. Uh, who has administrative control over them? And then when that changes, you want to know about it. Because maybe this, this, this thing, this instance, you know, in, a, in an on-prem environment, it could be like a, a contract or laptop or an HVAC system. Um, it now exercises some administrative control over a critical system and it's never done that before. We bring that to your attention. Maybe you want to take some automated action and quarantine it right away. Maybe you want to go through some sort of approval process and bring it to someone's attention. But either way, you want to know about it. I want to get your reaction to a comment I saw yesterday morning at a keynote on Theresa Carlson's breakfast, the public sector breakfast. Um, Christine Halverson of the FBI said, we're in a data crisis. And she talked about that they can't react to some of these bad events, and a lot of it's post-event. That's the, the basic stuff they need now. And she said, I can't put the puzzle pieces fast enough, together fast enough. So you're actually taking that from a, like a network ops standpoint, IT ops. How do you get the puzzle pieces together fast? What's the secret? Well, well so the, the first secret is that we're, we're very focused on, on real-time network Net, network data and network telemetry. I, I often describe XROP as like Splunk for the network. The, the idea is, you know, it requires completely different technology, but the idea is the same. Extract you know, value and insight out of data you already have. But the advantage of the network for security, and what I love about it, is that it's extremely real time. Uh, it's as close to ground truth as you can get. Yeah. It's very hard to hide from, and you can never turn it off. Yeah. So with all of those properties, uh, network analytics makes for, you yeah. know, has just tremendous in, in implications for cybersecurity. I mean, obviously you're visibly excited. I get, I'm a data geek myself, but you made a good point I want to double down on, is that yeah. moving packets from A to B is movement. And movement is part of how you detect it, right? So It is, but so packets itself, that's data in motion, but if you're only looking at the packets, you're barely scratching the surface. You know, companies have tried to build security analytics based on flow data for a long yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And, and flow, flow data, flow records, it, it's like a phone bill. It tells you who's talking to whom and how long they, they spoke, yeah. but there's no notion of what was said in the conversation. In order to do really high quality security yeah. analytics, you need to go much deeper. So we understand resources, we understand users, we understand what's normal, and, and we're not using statistical baselines. Yeah. We're actually building predictive models around how we expect uh, endpoints and instances to behave, and then when they deviate from their model, that's when we say, hey, there's, there's that, something That's the key on. point for you guys. So that, and that means you can help me prioritize. Absolutely. Because that's the biggest challenge these guys have, right? They, they oftentimes don't know where to go, they don't know how to, how to weight the different. Well, so that's one challenge, and I think another yeah. really big challenge, and we see this uh, even with uh, offerings that, that have been publicized recently, is that detection itself isn't good enough. Yeah. That's just an alert cannon. And there was a session that, that actually talked about alarm deafness that occurs. It occurs in, in hospitals and other environments where all you get are these common alarms and people stop paying attention to them. So it, in addition to the ability to perform high quality detections, you need a very streamlined investigative workflow. You know, one click away so you can see, okay, you know, what's going on here? Is this something that requires uh, uh, additional, uh, yeah. uh, additional uh, you know, uh, investigation. Well, I think you guys are on the right track, and I think what's different about the cloud is that, you know, they call the show reInvent, um, but rethinking existing stuff for cloud scale is a different mindset, it's a holistic, like you're taking more of a holistic view saying, I'm not going to focus on a quote, packet path or silo that I'm comfortable with. You kind of got to look at the bigger picture and then have a data strategy or, uh, a statistic or, or some competitive, unique IP. I, I think that's an excellent summary. <laughs> I, I, you know, what, what I would add is that organizations, as, as they kind of follow their cloud journey, we're seeing a lot of interest from security teams in particular that don't want to do swivel chair kind of integration yeah. where I have something on-prem and I have something in the cloud. 
they want something much more holistic, much more seamless, unified, automated, much more seamless, much more <laughs> automated. Um, you know, I, I sat in about five different securities track sections, and every single one of them kind of ended with the so we automated it with a lambda function. <laughs> so clearly, a lot of capability for automation in in, in, uh, in public yeah. cloud. Jesse, great to have you on the cube. CTO, co-founder of Extra Hop. Uh, what's next for you? What's what, what's going on? What's next? Well, we continue to make really big investments on, on security. I wish I could say that uh, cybersecurity would be done at some point, but it will never be done. It's an arms race. Right now, I think we're seeing uh, uh, some really great advancements on the defense side that will translate into, into big success. Right. Um, always focusing on, on the data problem. As data goes from you know, 10 gigabits to 100 gigabits, you know, Amazon just announced their their C5 accelerated 100 gigabit network adapter, uh, always looking at how can we extract more yeah. value from that data Leverage the power. Leverage in the real power. time. Well, yeah. we got to get you back on, this, on the program. We're going to increase our cybersecurity coverage. We certainly will be at the security event. I didn't know it was announced publicly. June, I think 26th and 27th in Boston. Give or take a day on either side. Could be one, the 27th, 28th, 26th, 27th. This is a big move for Amazon. We'll be there. I think it is. Great job. Live coverage here from the floor, on the next floor at Amazon reInvent 2018. We'll be right back, more CUBE coverage after this short break. Two sets, we'll be right back. <laughs>